So here we are with the picture nearly aligned. We've missed out some of the various different adjustments for you because it's iterative, just dragging and dropping each point on the picture around until you get the alignment closer and closer. So we've saved you a little bit of time by getting it nearly right. So you can see the picture's in good shape here, it's in good shape over there, but we're a little bit misaligned here. So we need to get that better. Now one thing just to tell you is because the blending tails off the intensity from the picture, at the edge of each overlap, that is quite forgiving of how well aligned you are. It's very important to be well aligned in the centre, but actually it's quite forgiving of precise alignment at the edges of each blend region. But we're going to show you the final steps, just to bring that alignment in a little bit closer so it's good enough to give you a really good image. Okay. So on screen here, We've selected a column of points and we're just going to move that column over a little bit and send that to the screen and you can see it will sort out the alignment on this picture. And there you can see we've tidied up the alignment of the picture. We're not quite 100% just at the very bottom of the blend region, but really that's actually close enough because the blending algorithm itself will take care of the rest of that. So, we've done the alignment of the two projectors using the two VP793s. We're nicely aligned, so what we now need to do is change from the align pattern on the blending setup to the actual blend curve. We need to do that on each scaler. So first of all, we're going to do the left-hand image. So we're going to go to the multiple unit mode menu item. We're going to go into the blend curve menu item. And where it says blend curve type, we're going to select S-curve rather than a line pattern. And that applies the actual blending algorithm to the picture. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do the same on the right-hand VP793. Now just so that you know, this procedure is the same whichever of the scales you're using, whether you're using a 792, a 793 or a 794. The menus may look a little different on each, but the, proce the procedure and process is the same. So if we now come out of those menus, you can see we have a single image on screen, which is blended together. And you can see the colour change is progressive as the blend blends the content from each projector. So now we can switch each scaler to the actual input signal. We have the left projector up, the right projector just needs to relock to the picture. The right projector isn't going to relock to the Oh, it did. It took a little while to get there. The right, you, are, you are a little bit at the mercy of how long it takes your projectors to get lined up. Now, if anyone can spot the deliberate mistake, the pictures look different. And that's because what we haven't done yet is we haven't set the aspect ratios correctly for the input signal. So what we need to do is go into the menu and choose in the geometry menu the correct picture format setting or aspect ratio to make sure it matches on the two scales. Otherwise it isn't going to look right. There we go. We've selected crop on the left scaler and if we could just show the viewers that we will also select to crop on the right scaler and now the pictures match as you can see. So if we come out the menus we have a single picture blended together looking like one image from both projectors. And just to show you, it really is two images. If I cover the front of one of the projectors, you can see that's the image coming from the right hand projector, excuse me, and that's the image coming from the left hand projector. The other little point to note, which is very important, is that these two images, as you can see, are, are operating in time and there's no tear between them. That's because by default these scalers work in what's called I.O. lock mode. An I.O. lock mode ensures that the input and output sinks are aligned vertically, so that when I feed the same input signal via a splitter to both scalers, it ensures that the output signals are also in time with each other, so I don't see any kind of frame tear between the two projectors. That's really important for when you're edge blending, because it doesn't matter how good your alignment is, you don't want tear between left and right images when there's motion across the blend region. 
and that is how to set up blending on a VP793. We've shown you how to do blending, we've shown you how to do warping. The only remaining item is to show you where the black level correction is. So the last part here is setting up the black level correction. That's necessary because when you have two projectors overlapping, not only is the light from the projectors, the white point, brighter where they overlap, but also the black is, is brighter because the residual light from the optics of the projector is twice the level where the projectors overlap. Whether that matters depends on the viewing environment. If you're blending projectors in a relatively bright environment, like a, a boardroom or a conference room, or maybe a lecture theatre, you wouldn't notice and it wouldn't be important, in which case you can use a scale like VP792, which doesn't do black level correction. But if you're blending in a dark environment, like a simulation room or a theatre, you would also need to do black level correction because you'd see the black level error, in which case you need VP793 or VP794, which have more powerful blending and are able to correct the black level. So, we're going to switch back to test patterns, and we're going to select a pattern which has got some blacking so that we can actually see the black level. So here we are with the aspect ratio test pattern, which appears to be one, even though it's from two scalars. So we know we've got good alignment. And this would allow us, in a lower lighting environment, to actually see the black level difference. We would see that this area here would be quite black, as would this area here, but the central area would look a bit brighter. And by using the VP793 or the VP794 black level correction, what we can do, this won't go any darker because this is the light leakage from the projector optics. You can't do anything electronically about that. So what you can do is slightly raise the black level in this area and slightly raise the black level in this area so it appears to be the same as the black level here. Now VP793 and 794 allow you to do that and they allow you also to correct the shape of that black level area just to properly align with the edge of each projector. Now unfortunately today when we're filming the actual light that we need for you to be able to see me talking to you means that we're not in a dark room so you can't actually see the black level on here. But we're going to show you the menus anyway, so you can see which menus they are. I'm afraid when we're doing this for you, for you to view online, it's not possible for you to actually see the effect on the picture. You'd need to be in a blacked out room to see that, which might be good because then you wouldn't be able to see me. So we're going to go to the multiple unit menu again. And we go into there, and now we're going to select the black level uplift menu item. And this allows us to choose the black level. Now, if you notice on the menu, we can only select the non-blend region or the middle right region. That's because the scaler knows which edges of the projector are being blended, so it knows how many regions there are in the image. So in this instance, the non-blend region is this region to the left here, and the middle right is the blended area here. By altering the settings there, we can take the black level of the picture up and down in that non-blend region so as to match the black level of the blending region. As you can see, it's having absolutely no effect on what you see on the screen here because really the ambient lighting that we need for the television camera is such that you can't see this. You might just, just, if you look very carefully, be able to see an edge here. It's slightly brighter here, slightly darker there. We're talking about incredibly subtle changes that you only see in a blacked out room. But that's what this is for. This is so that you can perfectly get that black level match, which you would see if you're in a black town room. The other part that you also may need to change, as well as changing the actual blend width, which we, we're going to put the black level back now, and you'll see we'll redraw it when you exit the menu item, it doesn't change it live, is we can also have this item called reduce black level uplift width. And that has an X parameter here, X2 and X4. Now the parameters change depending which region's being blended. And what these do is they're a bit like geometry correction, but just for the black level correction. So independent of the warping of the image, they allow you to drag the corners of the black level correction region around just to correctly line 
the blended and non-blended regions for the black level correction. And that's how you set the black level correction when edge blending with a VP794 or a VP793. So I hope you've enjoyed our presentation on how to do blending and warping with the VP79 series products. Time to go and do it yourself now. Thank <laughs> you.